We can change the state in the next five days, and we are going to do it because of the extraordinary support here. Thank you very much. Thank you for leading the charge. Thank you for bird dogging Andrew Cuomo before anybody else was doing it. Yeah. And I will see you on the campaign trail. Thank you. Yeah. We're at a really more important moment in New York State history, um, and. Andrew Cuomo and I completely disagree on what the future of New York should look like. We disagree on education policy, we disagree on energy policy, we disagree on tax policy. So I am running because I, I think, old-fashioned reason, I think I'll be a better governor than Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, you can hear what I think and you can maybe hear what Andrew Cuomo thinks, although he doesn't always like answering direct questions. But it's entirely different to see us debate each other so I could ask him, you know, how do you think we should be uh, dealing with class sizes that are 35 kids in some areas? Why do you believe in Common Core? You know, he can put out an ad about it, but it's entirely different if you actually get to hear that back and forth. And, and, and that's how voters really make a decision. So unfortunately, what they've been left with is uh, mostly listening to my policy platform. And uh, perhaps fortunately, that's led to a lot of new support because we have extraordinary momentum right now. There's two different groups of people who are supporting us. People who have real pent-up frustration, like parents and teachers who are in Common Core, yeah. or uh, people who care about the environment uh, and our water around fracking, um, or people who care about immigrant rights. All of those areas, there's been pent-up frustration. But once I started running, we've had a whole new set of people who joined the campaign. And they're people who are excited about the potential that Tim and I represent. You know, we are both internet natives, and so we understand that internet policy is actually central to social policy, to economic policy, uh, really focused on you know, taking on big cable, um, and also have a very hopeful vision for New York. I, I actually went to Pennsylvania to look at hydrofracking, and I um, talked to a grandmother whose one-year-old granddaughter was throwing up every morning because of the methane in her own water tap. Uh, I talked to some people who had worked on the wells, who talked about how unsafe the work was. I, I smelled the air and I looked at the economic devastation. And then I read the studies. And uh, it's, it's poison, it's toxic to our water. And our water is ourselves, it's our life. So it's essential to me that we ban fracking and move forward on renewables. It came out on July 10th showing that hydrofracking is dangerous, poisons our water, what we've already known. And Andrew Cuomo said there's no new information. So maybe he needs to go back to school. Thank you very much. Over a year of educating parents and educating teachers and educating politicians, I think we start this year with hope, to be honest with you. And, and, I, and I think that we're not going to stop until we see that change. When teachers began to speak out and parents began to speak out, we united. And, and, and once parents and teachers do unite, there's no politician uh, that can cram things down on kids' throats. Uh, that's when we can step up and say no. We ended up having unions putting their shields down for these kids and telling the politicians, if you want it them, you'll come through us. And the politicians, they've tried, but it's been unsuccessful. What we have is hope. This, this is where we are. We, we, they can't win. You know, in the words of Diane Ravitch, we are many, they are few. Uh, this is going to be our victory, and it's going to be a victory for our children.